Hello there, fellow captains, and welcome to Halo Reach, which is finally on PC. Finally. I don't understand why they weren't developed in concert for both Xbox as well as PC. I mean, they're both Windows products. But here's my favorite mission. Or, I think it may be two missions. My favorite two missions. From the entirety of the Halo series. Now, saying that, I haven't played Halo 5. If that's Guardians, isn't it? Halo 5 Guardians. And when I did play Halo 4, it was on console. And I don't really enjoy consoles. The limited FOV. The lowered uh, frames. They're capped at, like, what, 30? Or, I think uh, Halo 4 was capped at 30. It was on the original... 360, wasn't it? I think Halo 5 Guardians was the first Halo on the Xbox One. But here we are. Now, of course, the mission in question that is my favorite is one where you're actually involved with some sort of space combat. Some sort of space combat. You're involved in space combat. You're in a broadsword, an experimental fighter interceptor. And it's a lot better than the longsword. In dogfights, at least... The longsword is a very versatile craft. It can take out capital ships in numbers. But this thing is more air superiority, if you know what I mean. It's a fighter. It's meant to be taken down the likes of Seraphs, Banshees. And whenever this released, I remember waiting outside our local game store, video games retailer, until midnight whenever this was released. There was like 30 people there. I remember getting it, getting to this mission, and it just blowing my mind. So here we are, we're in space in a Halo game. Now, I, if I remember right, in Halo 4, at the end of the game, or at least towards the end of the game, you get to pilot a Pelican, which is the first time in Halo, outside of mods, you get to actually pilot a Pelican. That's a, that's a, that was awesome. Although it wasn't really for long, it was kind of just to get yourself from A to B, if I remember right. Look at this. Going through the shaft... Of a currently under construction UNSC frigate. It's so cool. Look at this. There is the Savannah, a UNSC frigate that is getting its jump drive or jump core or whatever it's called, sorry, so that we can deploy it on a Covenant Corvette, rig the Covenant Corvette to dock with a carrier, a Covenant carrier for refueling purposes, and then detonate the jump driver, um, you'll see what it's actually called in a minute, I forget. But at the moment, we're just getting used to the controls. Toggle, pressing 1, toggles the weapon systems, either missile or machine gun. Okay, we can do a little snazzy maneuver there. If we press, oh shit, okay, that was close. Now, the one thing I do remember, and this is coming back to me, is just how maneuverable this thing is. Okay, here we go. Some Covenant bogies inbound. I think it might just be some um, Banshees. The space variant of Banshees. Which have some additional thrusters, I believe. Just so they operate a lot more efficiently in space. Then you've got the in atmosphere kind, which is just very small. It's always confused me, though. How do the... That is so awesome. This is so awesome. Look at this. I mean, of course, they're very easy to take out. The Banshees themselves aren't a lot bigger than the elites that pilot them. And that's what I was about to mention there. It's, uh, how do, exactly do the elites not freeze to death? Because the Banshees don't fully encapsulate the pilot. Uh, maybe it's just the space gear they're wearing, the armor. That's probably what it is, Connor. Probably what it is. But look at this. Look, this is way Bungie. Are amazing. Look at the art. The art team behind the Halo series and even Destiny is awesome. Look. Just look at the planet. Look at the nebulas in the distance. Just everything is gorgeous. 343. I don't think they really understand what made Halo Halo. Okay, this is Seraphs, I believe. Yep, in, uh, inbound Seraphs. So what we have to do here with the Seraphs is take out their shield with our machine guns. Once they're down, use our missile, as he's saying. 
kind of talking over him, but yeah, using machine guns to take down their shields, then lock on with missiles, four missiles, I think it's about three actually to take them out, but you deploy them in groups of four. Target down. But we are taking some serious damage here. Our shields are down to 50%. You know, just keep the tail on this bogey here. Target down. Now what's that, another seraph? They didn't jump in in a great number. I think there was only like six seraphs jumped in, but even so, look at, they're very formidable. At the moment, the station itself, its defense systems are down. We are currently defending the station while well, it just gets everything up and running again. And it's a spectacle. Oh, there we go. Anchor 9 defense is online. Now, the anchor station is available in Sins of the Prophets, the Souls of a, Sol a Solar Empire Rebellion modification. As, like, their um, Starbase, and it's so fucking cool. Watch this. Watch this. Station defense is online. Look at that hail of fire. Look at that. I recently got back into Sins of the Solar Empire Rebellion, or Sins of the Prophet, sorry. Started a campaign as the UNSC against the Covenant. <laughs> Didn't last long. The Covenant do have a, a, a massive advantage because their ships are just generally better. At least their capital ships are better than the UNSC's. So I had a, quite a large fleet. The complement was varied in its layout. Had ships for planetary bombardment, ships that excelled in capital to capital ship combat, ships that took care of uh, point defense or uh, starfighters very easily. Just, you know, things for every occasion or every possible threat. My fleet was larger, but they still completely wiped me out. Look at that. Got the missile lock. Target down. On to the next one. Shields down. Let's get those missile locks. I don't really have to go for the missile locks, but I just think it's pretty cool how they do lock on. There's another frigate currently under construction, or maybe it's being repaired. Some sort of satellite here as well. Just pulling back a bit until our shields start to regen. But in the meantime, these Banshees shouldn't pose too much of a threat, at least. Another Seraph there. Locked in. Let's close the distance. Missiles out. Yeah, there we go. And all I had already taken down the shields. We just needed to take it down. Oh, that hail of fire is just glorious. Banshees are very hard to see. In comparison to the Sabre. They're tiny. I think I called this thing a broadsword earlier. It's a Sabre. You can get Sabres in Sins of the Prophets as well. I think they're through the defensive Sabre hangar facility. Or building. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a defensive option for your planets. Because they're not a long-range fighter, they do need a base. Like you saw at the start, they do have uh, additional thrusters to get into space. Oh, and we have some phantoms. Now, getting too close to the phantoms does that. Take a lot of damage. You have to approach them from the rear. Hit them with missiles. Okay, let's keep our distance here, though. Target down. Two more to go. Or three more to go, actually. Tango to our right. Okay, 17% uh, hull integrity. Let's get that regen, get our shields back up as well. There we go. We've got another bogey to our 3 o'clock. This will be the last Phantom. Let's close in and finish him off. Coming behind him around the side of this. What are they? Repair gantries? These structures to my left and right? I think that's... Might be exactly what they are. What's what are they shooting at? A couple of banshees. Ah, oh, they're easily enough taken down. On the seraph, need to close to about three to four hundred meters. Just oh, they're jumping out. Okay. Look at the size of that thing. Now, the actual 
UNSC frigates aren't that big. They're really not. In comparison to some of the uh, Covey ships that we're about to see in a moment, they're not that big. That, uh, that's old George. He's the only Spartan 2 in the Noble team, I believe. I think the rest are Spartan 3s, or some variation of the Spartan 3s, because there were a few different Spartan 3 programs, but I think George is the only Spartan 2 in the team, noticeable by his... He's got at least a foot, maybe more, on the rest of the Noble team members. Okay, look at that. Covenant are glassing the planet. Ah, oh, there we are, the beautiful Pelican. Such an iconic ship. So iconic, in fact, that uh, most other games that are sci-fi influenced i mean what was that one uh, that call of duty game infinite warfare where it was basically your ship just running from and trying to attack an enemy ship that it was uh commanded by john snow even the airdrop ships were very similar to the pelican and there's many other examples and here we go look at this That's gorgeous, man. And here we are. Cubby Corvette. There's Savannah. Okay, she's about to open fire. Now, our objective here, as I mentioned at the start, take out the protection such as the Staris and Banshees. Take out the engines, which we'll be doing momentarily. Board the Corvette. Place the jump drive, or the slipstream, slipspace. Uh, I think that's what it's actually called, slipspace drive. On board the Corvette. Program the Corvette to return to its carrier. One of those massive carriers that the Covenant have. And, well, you flew... Fr you, uh, friendly fire, you flew right in front of me when I was trying to take out a target. Oh, shut up. See, there we go. But uh, off in the distance there, this is all pre-recorded because I was having a lot of fun. But off in the distance there, just in front of the enemy Corvette, you can see a Covenant uh, carrier. But again, yes, we bring the slip space drive on board the Covey Co uh, Corvette. Plot it to return to the carrier to refuel and then detonate the slip stream drive or activate it. Look at this. Look at all the detail in this thing. God damn. That's, it really bums me out, actually. This was the last Halo game developed by Bungie. Until they moved on to um, Destiny 1 and 2. In Destiny 2, you, you see a lot of your... Um, what are they called? Not game jump ships? Something like that. But you see a lot of your ship, your personal ship in Destiny 1 and 2. But you don't ever get the flat like this. Never. You never get the pilot it, and it bums me out massively. Because there's so much potential. I mean, look at this. It doesn't have to be anything grand. It can just be a little missile. I mean, they could have done it with the Tekken King expansion. When you're approaching Oryx's uh, Dreadnought, maybe you had to take out a few targets. Something like that. Or even against the Cabal in Destiny 2. Anything just to give us an excuse to fly our ships. Now, there are uh, quite a few different models of ships in Destiny. But they don't have to be unique in any way. Just give them the same flight model, same weapon systems. Oh, no, look at this. Oh, that is so awesome, man. That's where we actually need to go, though. Just touch down exactly where we were a moment ago. Look at this. I wonder if we'll ever get a good Halo game again. And saying that I haven't played Halo 5, I did watch the full playthrough. Didn't really... Impress me much. I mean, the story for Halo Reach wasn't the best, but it still had a lot going for. Oh, okay. Savannah's taking a lot of fire from their plasma batteries. 
Looks like we've got zero G in here as well. Oh, hello. I think that was a uh, elite marine or something, whatever they're called. Spec Ops Trooper, is that it? Or Jet Trooper? I can't remember. There's so many different elite variants in Halo. There's another one. Okay, we've got a squad with us. Russell Hunt and... What's his name? Bulterman? Bulterman. Back when the actual elites looked like elites. Like an actual civilized, sophisticated, honorable race of aliens. And not the monsters that 343 turned them into. They made their mandibles on their jaws a lot more monstrous. With a lot more teeth. They made them a lot more bulky and just they weren't as elegant or as agile as they had been in Halo. I mean, they're supposed to be fucking goddamn space samurai. An alien race of samurai, basically. And 343 three just know they're space monsters now. Even though in Halo 5 there was a full faction of, what were they called, the Sword of uh, Zanghelios or something? And they were supposed to be the honorable race led by the Arbiter, but no, they looked like big monsters. Big, heavy, cumbersome monsters that, even if they were trying to be quiet, they couldn't have been with the size they were. It doesn't make any sense. But, that's the appeal of the games. You're a super soldier fighting evil aliens. Uh, save that for the Brutes. I mean, that's literally their name. Brute, elite kind of signifies or leads you to believe that you know they are elite they're the best of the best the best the covenant has to offer and yet from this this game they were fine with this the way they move is just tactical and then they turn them into big lumbering brutes whenever the game has a faction called the brutes for fact's sake curious to see what the next one will be though what the story of it will be oh there's one of those little engineers Oh, I forgot. I saw that. That's cool. Okay, let's bring the shields down so George can land with the Pelican on the Slipstream Drive. Slipspeed Drive. God damn it. So many different sci-fi universes with so many different names for their faster than light travel. So irritating. Go on, Savannah. Land it. I mean, I know we're on board, but... Don't let that hold you back. Some reinforcements arriving, look at that. Isle George, Spartan 2 boys. Just to go back and where I was talking about Halo 5 being a disappointment. What was that Spartan's name? Spartan 4 or whatever the facky classification he was. He was an Oni of an agent of Oni. And he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Master Chief in a fist fight, even damaging the Chief's visor. That would not happen. Not in a million years would that happen. I mean the reasons are obvious. Chief has had surgical operations as well as chemicals put into his body to make him the best there is. His bones are covered in like a ceramic so that they're near unbreakable. His bones have also been made more dense. So not only is he heavier, but also it takes a lot more to actually break a bone. The muscles have been made more dense, so of course stronger. Their height has been increased. The reflexes have been intensified greatly. They can also see in the dark, and their eyesight is just far better than normal human. And what does uh, Lo his name Spartan Lock? I remember that because I'm trying to take out these fucking gun consoles. Because even though I had killed the operator, they were still firing on the Savannah. We could have saved it. Yeah, there was something we could we could have done. Oh dear. But yeah, Spartan Lock fighting Chief and going toe to toe. That was bullshit, man. That's why 343, they don't understand the IP they have control of. They just don't. Take out these scrubs here. I wonder if the uh, shipmaster's on board. Oh, that must be him. Oh, no. Oh, cloaked one. That must be him. 
Surely it is. Oh, there's a lot of cloaked boys around. Oh, shit, okay. My melee missed. It went right beside him. Let's try that again. See if we'll have a better result than the previous. Yeah, they just do not know we're here. I mean, you'd expect that they would, wouldn't you? I mean, I know their communications have been deactivated, and there's that carrier off in the distance. I know their communications have been deactivated, but the fact that they've been sending reinforcements to the hangar to repel us and, and still, oh, you know what, we'll just pay attention to our consoles here. No need to worry about behind us. No need to station guard at the door. Oh, shit, that's a lot of elites. Need to pull back, get our shields back up. There's a cloaked boy in front of us. Take him out with our DMR. DMR has to be one of my favorite weapons in any first person shooter. It's a shame that the scout rifles in Destiny 2 are just garbage for the most part. Come on, go take him down. That has got to be the ship master, surely. We're close to taking him out. Shields down. Headshot down. Take so out this little fellow first. Any stealth boys around? I guess that must be all of them. And here's the console. Is it obvious why this is my favourite mission in Halo Reach? Or the entirety of the Halo series? In fact, you know what? This is my favourite mission out of anything Bungie have developed. Honestly. The only one that comes close is the iconic silent cartographer map where you're landing in your pelicans and assaulting the beach. Going further inland to uh, discover the secrets of the Halo installation. I wonder if the savannah's savannah's gone. Take out a few of these grunts. Jackal's down also. I wonder if that door, no, that door is purple. It's currently locked. We almost have to go up to the right. Still got a few squad members with us, which is good. In Halo, I always try to keep the AA or the bots alive. I, I just do. You're Master Chief, you have to do that. Well, in this case, you're not, but you know what I mean. You're not the Chief unless everyone comes out alive. Can you clear the hangar again? Oh, another elite. Oh, he looks similar to the elite that was on the bridge. But I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be the ship monster. Okay, let's rearm here. Reload at least. What's that? DMR. Ooh, rocket launcher. Switch it out. No, I don't need the sniper for the moment. Alright, where are they coming from? Get down to the left here. Take out these jackals. Because they can be a pain in the ass in large numbers. When their shields start to overlap and stuff. There we go, target down. Should be another group incoming. To our 12 o'clock. Take these folks down, there we go. Get down. The only place you're supposed to be, Grunt, is on the ground. Either asleep or dead, that's the only way it's acceptable. Is that it? I'm guessing there's going to be more. There's got to be more. There we go. <laughs> Look at all the little grunts. They had got to have been terrified coming through that door. The elite commander would have been, okay guys, you can do this. Advance is one unit. You'll take him down. You'll be fine. Dead. This is the door opens. Dead. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some high ground here. Oh, hold on. They're right behind us. Oh yeah, we got two elites behind us. We got them both. I oh, know the gold boy is still up. <laughs> well, he was. <laughs> is that it? Is that everyone? Oh, no, we got more elites. Surprisingly, there's a lot of elites. We got this next fella. That should be it, surely, after him. Oh, we've lost a squad member. I know oh, we've lost two. Shit. Has he got a rocket launcher? What's he using? 
the Covenant variation of a rocket launcher, I think. Is that it? Well, George is saying, yeah, it must be it. Always love the missions in Halo where you're boarding an enemy ship. This bird who can fire and our thruster gimbal is toast. It means the only way off the slag heap is gravity. And the good news? <laughs> I always love this scene. Watch this. At current velocity, 53 seconds to launch point. This is George showing a Spartan 3. Why Spartan 2 is just better. Time is fried. And you'll have to fire it manually. Oh, uh, look at this, we see. Wait till you see. There was no real reason for George to take his helmet off, but he just wanted to look into your eyes when he just lifted you off like a child and threw you through the shield in the space. Look at this. <laughs> we could have just walked and jumped, but no, he was like, I'm going to look into your... I want you to look into my eyes. When I show you why you're a little bitch for being a Spartan 3 and not a Spartan 2. But there you go guys, that is my favourite mission in the entirety of the Halo series or even anything Destiny have developed. If you picked up Reach on Steam, then I hope you're enjoying it, as I very much am. And don't forget to check out my Patreon. I currently have 6 patrons, which is getting closer to the goal guys! Come on captains, get in there! 14 more and I've reached my goal of 20 patrons. Any more than that would be amazing, but the goal for now is 20. So thank you very much to the six who have helped me so far. Their names are on screen. If you'd like to just go through um, the right of joining the Discord, that is free. And the link for both is in the description below. But yes, thank you very much to my current six patrons. Their names are on screen, as I said. And I hope you guys are enjoying whatever it is you're playing. I, of course, like always, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.